Hello, Angie. Hi there. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Great. It's good to see you. Uh, welcome to the uh, to the, the big show, everybody. Um, I'm Ben Albers. I'm the exhibitions director at the Lawrence Art Center, um, and it's uh, final Friday in Lawrence, Kansas, which traditionally is. Uh, uh, bustling with all sorts of, of art-related events and such to be doing, but I won't state the obvious um, as to why we're doing this uh, virtually, but here we are. Um, so I'm coming to you from uh, the Lawrence Art Center, which is located in downtown Lawrence, and Angie, uh, I think, is just down the road, right? Well, my studio is just down the road. I actually live about 30 minutes outside of Lawrence. And I'm at home now, but I'm at my studio more often than not some days. So, yeah. yeah. Well, um, so uh, Inside Art Talks, we've been doing these for several years. And, um, you know, we have about 25 shows here at the Lawrence Art Center throughout the year. And we, as much as we can, try to get artists to come and, and talk about their work and their process. Um, and so here we are, January 1, um, whatever the date is, it's January 29, uh, the first of the year, uh, our, first, our first show. Um, we also have, uh, here's the commercials for the Lawrence Art Center. We have another uh, couple of exhibits that are up right now. One is by Michael McCaffrey um, called Family Album. Um, we have Angie's, Angie's show, and then we also have Kitty City, uh, which is a partnership with the Lawrence Art Center and the Lawrence Humane Society. Um, and all of those exhibits run through February 27th. As always, exhibitions are free. Uh, the building is open. Uh, the Art Center has uh, COVID um, procedures and, and uh, safety measures that are all in place, but the building is, is open seven days a week. Um, and the galleries are accessible just with some capacity um, limitations to them, but um, we're going to talk about Angie's show and, and her work that's that's here uh, for the next couple of months, and then um, feel, feel free to come in tomorrow uh, and, and check out the shows in person. Uh, I want to thank Trudy Credit Union uh, for their help. They always help uh, sponsor the art talks here at the Lawrence Art Center, um, and I also want to thank Marlo Angel, who's running this whole shindig um, from behind the curtain. And um, she's also put together a 3D tour of this show um, that you can see at the Lawrence Art Center's website. So it's a really cool feature uh, for those that can't make it here in person or uh, really want to play it safe and stay home and see as much as they can. Um, you can check that out on our website. Uh, throughout tonight, if you have any questions, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, uh, just type them in and we'll we'll try to get to those throughout the talk. It'll probably last about 30 minutes or so. Um, but feel free to, to uh, fire away questions for Angie, not for me. Uh, all right, so I want to introduce uh, our, our artist tonight. Um, <clears throat> Little, a couple of notes about Angie. Uh, she's been featured in Martha Stewart Living, uh, Midwest Living Magazine. Uh, her animation, her animation work premiered on PBS in 2016 in the documentary Daughters of the Forest. She has won numerous awards for her work, including Independent Music Award uh, for her album art, and her first children's book, Mary Menagerie: Animal Antics from A to Z, was published in 2018. She has a master's degree from Tisch School of the Arts uh, at New York University and a bachelor degree from Benedictine College in Atchison, Kansas. And um, I've, I've known Angie and her work for, for many years and she's always been very generous with things like the art auction and, um, and she's got work all over the place, uh, especially here in the Midwest. But uh, Angie, talk about, um, this, this work that you've made for this show and, and the ideas behind that. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go way back. Uh, the title of this exhibit is Night the Beloved. And you know, a long time ago before I was a full-time artist, I was you know, living in New York City after I finished my graduate degree and not doing anything art related, you know, running a restaurant closed 
than running a bakery. Um, but at nighttime, like I just had this drive to make art. And during that time, I was like reading a lot and really taking in like quotes from things. And I found this quote from Antoine Saint Exupery, who's the author of, you know, The Little Prince. Everybody knows that one. Um, and it was night, the beloved, I have to look at it, night when words fade and things come alive. And actually, um, I've got it here. I, I should have found it earlier and put it in the exhibit, but I've got this little paper cutting and it's one of my very, very first paper cuttings. Um, sorry, can't get this straight. So, you know, I didn't really know what context that quote was written in because I'd never read the book that it came from. And I didn't even know what book it came from. I just, I loved the quote because at that time I was, you know, embracing the nighttime. It was the only time I had to myself where I could just kind of, you know, explore, you know, what I was thinking, what I really wanted to do, which was art. And so, you know, I'd spend like these late hours, you know, making art and cutting paper. And it was just kind of my escape from this other reality that I was living that I thought I wanted, but really, you know, was realizing like oh, what I really wanted to be doing was making art. So fast forward to now, um, you know, this last year has been, everybody knows how it's been. It's been a little crazy for a lot of us. Um, you know, in the art world, we've had a lot of disruptions, uh, lots of shows canceled, you know, it's been a little crazy. And um, between that and like, you know, the, well, the pandemic and like the whole political thing we've been dealing with and the social eruptions that we've been dealing with, like I kind of went back to that quote where it's like, okay, you know, somewhere we all have to find a break from this. So, you know, kind of like how I took a break from what I was doing then and like found this little period of time where I could kind of escape. Um, you know, I went back to this and and I was like, well, I need to read this book because I need to know, you know, what context this came from. And so, you know, he was writing about his experience as a as a pilot in the war, you know, the French War in 1940. And and in the book, like when he references this quote or, you know, when he says this, he's kind of like taking these steps back from his reality and like going back to childhood and going back to just like these quiet times where it's like, oh, you know, let's let's get away from this and kind of just let the magic happen here. And and that's kind of like um, how I related it today. It's, you know, I'm, I'm definitely doing what I love today. I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing. Um, but with the whole, you know, climate that we're living in, it's like, I think we all need some kind of escape. Um, so I kind of related it to that. And, and in some way, you know, these works were kind of created. Um, they're all nighttime themed. You know, kind of like I want to just create this like visual escape from from what we're dealing with and kind of go back to like a, a childlike place of wonderment. So hopefully I accomplish that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, not only for me, but for, you know, the people looking at the pieces. No, I, I see that. I, I picked up on the, the nighttime <laughs> continuity uh, when, when I first got to got to see all the work in, in person. Uh -huh. um, well, Okay, I'll switch gears and talk a little bit about uh, process. So, how'd you get into hand, the hand cut paper world? Um, so I always wanted to do art. I never really knew about paper cutting, and I and I think when people think about it, they just think of like snowflakes and crafts and things, you know. Right. Um, so I was going to NYU. I was doing this program called Interactive Telecommunications because that was kind of my like at that point. I was like if I want to make a living as an artist, I guess I should be like a web designer. This is early 2000s. <laughs> like, well, that's a creative job. Um, and it's funny, you actually had a, an exhibit by Danny Rosen or Rosen mm -hmm. a couple years ago, and he was a professor in my, in my program. Oh. And so we were doing all this like cool tech stuff, you know, working with like touch screens and interactive like applications for the internet. And, um, I was pretty into that, but one afternoon, one of our teachers that was teaching, you know, animation for the web, I was like, you guys need to come in and kind of get some foundation about, you know, the beginnings of animation, like where it came from. And so I went in one Saturday and uh, this guy showed us this animation by Lottie Reiniger, who's a German artist um, called The Adventures of Prince Ahmed. And it was all silhouette, cut out, stop motion. And I just remember seeing it and being like, whoa, this is like, this is my thing, <laughs> you know, like, 
this is what I want to be. Like, I don't know why I related to it so much, um, but I just really did. I saw it and I knew that that was what I was looking for in some way or shape or form. Um, so my thesis project ended up being a cut paper stop motion animation. And it was like the first time I'd ever cut paper, the first time I'd ever done animation. And it turned out, okay, you can see, you, you can go to my YouTube channel and see my little Nancy story, you know, that I made. Um, but yeah, that's how I got started. You know, I when I finished my program, I went a completely different direction. Like, a little crazy, maybe. Uh, opened a restaurant, closed a restaurant, opened a bakery, closed a restaurant. Uh, actually, not a bakery, still running. But anyway, um, but yeah, so I really wanted to be doing art though. And like, even after that, I started experimenting with artsy stuff like painting, because I just didn't quite have like the whole like paper cutting thing in my mind as being like an art form necessarily. So I was painting, doing watercolors, acrylics, blah, blah, blah. And then one night I sat down and started like cutting out, like it was kind of a reflection of my day. It was like a stack of dirty dishes and coffee cups. Cause you know, at the bakery, it's like just constant, like dirty dishes. And the background had all this stain, like coffee stains. And it was such a simple piece, but it just like, out of all the stuff that I had been doing, it was like, you know, it took me back to like when I saw the Lottie Reiniger animation was like, again, this is this is what I need to be doing. And so after that, I mean, I don't think I've touched like any other art form since then. Mm -hmm. You know, everything has been paper cutting. And so I just started doing it and kind of honing my skills and my style. And that was, you know, 15, 14 years ago, 13 years ago. So, yeah, I've been doing this full time now for 12 years. Wow. Um, yeah, that's interesting when those connections sort of come back around and, and it's like, oh, wow, yeah, that's that's what I should be doing. Um, so, you know, I, I get to work with so many different artists uh, in in this position at this place. And I've always and being an artist myself. It's it's I'm always curious, you know, the, the path with within the field. Uh, you know, there's so many different ways of going going at it. But I know that you um, you do a lot of art fairs um, regionally, and um, and that must have been sort of decimated this year, this past year. Um, so sure. yeah, so maybe talk about uh, the, the the sort of learning curve of uh, you know getting a career started with art fairs or juried shows or solo shows. Um, how did that sort of evolve for you? Um, so I moved back to Kansas from New York City in 2009, like just knowing, you know, you know, I started putting art online and people started looking at it and commenting on it. And I started getting emails about it. And, and that just gave me like the confidence to like, you know, be able to kind of walk away what I, from what I was doing there and really just dive into this. So I moved back to Kansas and it was kind of like, okay, well, here I am. I have no job. <laughs> like, you know, I have a child. I like, what am I going to do? So I don't have to just like rely on my family, even though they were great. They supported me and it was awesome. But, um, you know, I just kind of started making stuff in my first art fair was I think the Lawrence arts and crafts festival that happens in September. And so I did that, you know, just, like not having a clue. I just I bought a tent. I bought some panels. I went and I set up my art and it was fantastic. Like the response I got, you know, I feel so lucky because people have responded so well to my work over the years and I didn't know what to expect, but I went out there and that just gave me the boost to just keep on going. And so really I've just kept on going. And I mean, art fairs are great. You know, I get to interact directly with people. Um, they're pretty stressful. It's a lot of work. You know, I do some bigger, you know, quite a few bigger shows now. Um, and up until, you know, the beginning of 2020, that was my primary, you know, source of income. Um, luckily, you know, over the years, cause it's been since 2009, I've, you know, developed an online presence. I've, you know, licensed my stuff. I've gotten lots of commissions. Um, so I've, I feel like the pandemic, if the pandemic had hit early on, I probably would have been pretty sad. Luckily, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm pretty established so that when there were no art fairs, I at least had like the online thing, but it was definitely like, you know, I was having some anxiety attacks there. I remember when it started, I was like, oh my gosh, it has to be over by the summer. Cause what am I going to do with no shows? Like, yeah. what am I going to do? And, um, I just want to say thank you all out there watching that have supported me because you got me through the last year and I don't know what's to come, but um, I just, I feel so much more confident now that like I can adapt to whatever happens. Um, Cause it's definitely been an adaptation. It's been a, a kind of soul reckoning in some way of like, what am I going to do? And I've just got to, I got to go with the flow and figure it out. And luckily yeah. I've, survived <laughs> well yeah i mean i think that's that's encouraging to hear i I've, I've heard and i and i feel that even about this organization sort of having to get creative about this situation uh that leaves you with a whole you know a whole lot to hold and uh, no real clear way on how to to keep moving forward um yeah so hopefully <laughs> this summer is a little better than last um, we'll see. Well, I mean, it's, it's great to to have have the work here since maybe there aren't as many physical outlets um, as you normally might might have. Um, so a lot of the work uh, that's in here is really quite new, um, and some of them are, are maybe a little larger than what I've I've seen from you, uh, like the ones that are behind me here. Uh -huh. um, uh, do you want to maybe we'll we'll talk about uh, a few individual pieces, um, and it's not scripted, I swear. Uh, <laughs> dissolved, dissolved into a silent night. Um, yes. Maybe Marlo can pull up that image and and talk about what's going on with that piece. Okay, so um, you know this one. It's all. I guess we haven't talked about that. It, maybe I missed. I probably missed answering your question clearly. It's all hand cut paper. We should point that out. Um, you know, and it's all cut with an X-Acto knife. Um, so this one, you know, I've just been like exploring different ways of making my art and um, kind of, I, I really like the process of going larger. I've always worked fairly small, but you know, in the last couple of years, I've tried, I've tried to work larger just to kind of expand my output and see where I can go with it. Um, so this one, I had actually sat down to start a completely different piece. And it was a morning like a month ago and there was snow all over the ground. And I looked out, you know, I've been working on my, in my sunroom at home beside my studio uh, since I'm home so much. Um, when I looked out the windows and it was just like this foggy, like wintry dreamscape. And I was like, I've got to go outside with my camera. Like I'm just missing this like opportunity for inspiration. So I walk outside literally the first thing I see is this barred owl just like swoops out of the trees. Wow. And, and then it, you know, I kind of followed it around cause it kept landing in different trees. And then it finally landed in a tree where there was another one sitting huh. and then they both flew off. And I think I got one, you know, one halfway decent picture with my camera. But, um, you know, after that I continued to walk around and I just love like the sparseness of like, you know, just little weeds like poking out of the snow and, and just, you know, I don't know, you know, we don't get to see snow all that often. So it's definitely like a different thing to experience and definitely kind of dreamy. And, and I came in and I was like, I have to, I can't do what I was about to do. I have to make an owl. It just like, it came to me right there. So uh, this one just really kind of just flowed out so naturally. Yeah. And, yeah. and there it is, you know. So that's, Yeah. Well, that's an interesting story. I thought maybe it had something to do with the book, um, you know, that you had referred to uh, pulling a lot of the titles from. Well, I did, you know, I did pull all the titles for the works created for this piece from the book. Um, and in some ways, you know, I created the works first and then I went through and was like, you know, what works with this? Because I even like storytelling and stuff, I always think of the visuals first. Like if I do animations, I think of the whole visual animation before I think of any other words or anything. It's just how my brain works. Um, so, you know, like I said, it ties to the story, not necessarily the story itself, but that kind of like <clears throat> escaping into the night and, you know, having this like dreamlike 
you know, experience or like just experiencing reality with like uh, kind of this childlike wonder. And then, you know, the, the elves carrying the lantern. And that was sort of like an, one of those like last things I added. And I, I asked my mom and my daughter for input. I have to give them credit here because they took it already from me. And they're like, see, I told you you needed that. So, um, <laughs> you know, the lantern, I put lanterns in a lot of things. I love that symbol of like light and and kind of illuminating something, like illuminating an answer or illuminating like, yeah. you know so yeah yeah i love that um let's let's grab another piece uh what peace meant tell me about the titling on that so this was actually uh the last one i finished the morning that i delivered well you picked up the works from me <laughs> um so I think if a lot of people look at this, they'll look at it and see some kind of like a love theme. But really, you know, when I was doing this, I think of, um, you know, kind of the state that we've been in for the last, well, I don't know how many years, but especially like over the last few months of just like head butting. I don't know. I, there's just all this tension surrounding us, you know, politically, socially. Sure. Um, and so this is kind of my statement on that. Like, you know, these two swans, they look the same. And to me, you know, my philosophy is kind of like, we're all human, you know, we're kind of built from the same cloth. But but if you look at their wings, there's different patterns in there. And, but yet they can come and like meet in this space face to face. And, and there's just like this peaceful feeling about it. And then like the lotuses, you know, blooming there, it's kind of like, uh, you know, in some way this happened, after, you know, as the inauguration was happening and um, just kind of like this rebirth, like this chance to start anew, if we can, you know, in some way. So that was, you know, I don't I don't get too political in any of my work. And um, but that was kind of, you know, just what peace meant. Like, look, yeah. you know, I think I think especially when you have this idea that something else is not right. I, I think if you just bring the two individuals together and come to an understanding, like things can be okay, you know. Yeah. I'm an eternal optimist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've known, and yeah, that's the piece right yeah. there. Uh, almost, well, no, every every composition that's here is there's a there's a pattern or a grid, a structure to it that there's a central focus. Uh, it's really glaring there. Um, why do you do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did you know you do that? You know, in some ways, like the composition of things, I'll move things around until it just feels right. I don't know. Maybe that's not what you're getting at, but I just like, like the Fox piece behind you. I mean, obviously the central focus is kind of like, there's like a little triangle of the bird looking at the fox with the lantern and and there's definitely like some kind of interaction going on with all three. I don't yeah. know. Well, there's there's a I guess symmetry is probably the a better term and Okay. Maybe, and so, maybe. you know, I a lot of people equate paper cutting with symmetry, you know, from like the German yeah. traditional and I do that from time to time. Um and I think naturally I kind of gravitate you know even like just because it's the fox piece it's not really symmet symmetrical but there is like i like to call it balance like there's a balance yeah well i we, we're not going to fight over which word is is the right <laughs> word but i think that uh it it uh it presents it carries uh, a calming effect from my perspective uh when there is that symmetry or balance that that uh, you seem to have in, in the compositions um, within within the paper cuts. Um, okay, I think we've got we've got another piece we wanted to show and talk about uh, floating in a sort of infinite leisure. Yeah, and that's a smaller piece, right? Yeah, it is. It's eleven by fourteen, and then you know matted and framed, and it's under glass versus the bigger ones that are you know uh, collaged onto wood and just sealed with acrylic. So this one is actually under glass. Um, this one, I don't know, I made it and I was like, oh my gosh, I think this is my favorite. Cause I, not favorite out of all of them, but 
you know, the smaller ones for sure. Um, where I could kind of relate to it. And it's sort of this idea that we could just kind of let go of everything and, and let, well, whatever you want to symbolize the, you know, the birds to be like, just kind of let it carry you, you know, just kind of flow across the horizon and then take in what's there and just kind of be free and light. I just, that's sort of my ultimate goal in life is to just feel light and free, whatever that means. So this is kind of the, you know, especially, you know, this one with the heaviness of the past year that we've lived. Um, this is kind of my like, ah, oh, moment, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. Um, and so to sort of switch gears a little bit with, with this piece uh, that we're looking at, talk a little bit, walk, walk through the process of how um, a piece like this gets constructed. Okay. So uh, the first thing I would start with on this, or the first thing I started with was uh, the actual, you know, fox with the birds. I drew out the composition on black art paper and then used an X-Acto knife to cut that out. And so, you know, having that, I kind of had this vision of, you know, what I want to put it on, how I want the background to look. So after I cut that out, um, I went in and this is mounted on like a kind of like mat board. So I painted the mat board and then coated that with a, a clear acrylic. And then um, the trees are all cut out of, so like the brown trees, those are cut out of an art tissue as well as the clouds. So they kind of um, give this great texture when you glue them down, you can, you still get the color, but you kind of like see the texture of the paper behind it or the color at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the other trees, those are all painted maps. So you can't really see the map texture necessarily through this one, um, but those are all, you know, everything's cut out with the exacto knife. So I cut out all the little trees and, and glued those down and the moon, you can see the map texture more on the moon actually. And that's sort of like a, a, a pearlescent, white paint that I coated the the map with. And then I like I like usually like to coat maps with a little bit of paint so that the texture still shines through the texture of the map. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So when I got those down, um, then I used the same, you know, map painted maps to color in the Fox. So basically I take the black paper and I lay it on top of a light box uh, and then take the, the map paper and trace out what I need for each little section and then cut it out. And I use a uh, book binding glue to glue those to the back of the back black paper. So um, I ultimately, you know, glue that down to the background. So you don't see, you know, my pencil lines or, you know, okay. yeah. So that's kind of my, that's kind of my process. And then, you know, with that one, that was kind of the end of it with the ones on wood, I would coat them, you know, with several coats of acrylic and poly, polycarbonate. Uh -huh. Wow, thank you. Um, I, I think certainly um, yeah, there, there's that there's that piece on the top left. Um, you know your your knife work is uh, is exquisite, but I think one of the things that people might not be able to see uh, through a computer screen um, is that texture. Like it's you know it's cut paper, but there are layers um, and the different types of paper and you know, all the layering that you put into it. Um, right. That was something that was, a, it's a really nice surprise, especially the the unframed pieces. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's really, it's really a, a nice, a nice detail, a nice touch. Yeah, that's, it's important for me to be able to show my work in person because I just have not really found a great way to convey it, you know, on a screen, like, all the layers and you know if you look at them from the side you you're going to see the paper texture and i love that about it you know i love looking at other artworks that have you know things going on in them like when you get up close and you see little details i mean that's that does it for me so it's it's oh, definitely hard to get that across online so it's always nice to have physical outlets to show my work so thank you <laughs> yeah well i also think as as artists um i'll speak for myself like I'm always like that's one of the first things I'm I'm looking for when I'm looking at art is like how do they you know how is this done, um, right. and I I'm always intrigued with pieces that I can't quite figure it out um, that I can keep going back to and 
not to necessarily solve a mystery, but um, you know, it's it's uh, that's the evidence of the hand, you know, that that I that I think is so genuine and and something that I think um, people need more of in their life. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Um, yeah, and you know, the uh, Marlow has has shown a few images of the gallery itself. Um, I've not even really counted how many pieces we have in here, but probably a couple dozen. Uh, some are close to there, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we're we're at about thirty minutes for this talk, um, and I think uh, I just wanted to remind people that we do have um, online. Um, experiences you can have with Angie's work or, or any of the other shows uh, that you can take a 3D tour, uh, links to uh, Angie's website where you can see more work uh, current and past. And um, yeah, explore. But I, I strongly encourage you for those that can um, come in and, and check it out. Um, it looks like now we've got some questions coming in. <laughs> um, Russell Rankle, um, you can see that, right, Angie, the questions? Yes, I can yeah. see that one. Um, my color palette, um, I don't know. I'm drawn to certain colors, and in some way, it's just kind of, you know, I'll have an idea for a main color and something, and then I'll go through my paints or my papers and just see, like, what I think goes well with it. Um, one of the things that I've explored with this exhibit is actually kind of going outside of my boundaries and, and, and getting into other colors that I'd never used before. And so I got into this like deep midnight blue color and just started exploring like what goes with that, like the owl piece that we looked at and the fox and there's a couple more. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of what I'm feeling. <laughs> Well, I noticed when when seeing this work for the first time, you know, um, the the nighttime thread that's that's yeah. through everything here. That's what I keyed in on with your palette was to was the you know amplifying that um, right. that nighttime aspect. Um, yeah. Do you um, do you teach or do workshops? Um. <laughs> in a normal world. Well, I've. No, not really. <laughs> I mean, I've done some stuff at the art center in the past workshops. Um, I've talked about it forever. I'm just like, maybe it's one of those things I need to think about now that my world has slowed down a little bit. It's like, I've just over, I, I'm kind of in some ways a workaholic and then and other times just like a slobaholic. I don't know if that's word, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it, I'm just bad at organizing. So I need a manager, I guess. Uh, maybe someday, <laughs> someday. I also have this fear of giving people knives. <laughs> it's like, okay, you want to come to my space? I'll give you a knife. But what happens if something goes wrong? Because one of the things that people love to tell me at art fairs and stuff is like, oh, you should see my exacto knife scar. And it's like, well, okay. <sighs> Oh I don't God. know. You know, it's just, I don't like blood. I need to get over that. Um, yeah, I would love to teach workshops someday. I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> if anybody has any ideas, I'd love to hear them. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't thought about the, uh, the knife issue. Like, just, I feel like I would need a really great insurance policy. Just oh, yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> um, uh. huh. um, well, what do you have coming up? Uh, I mean, I guess that's kind of a stupid question because we don't really know what's coming up uh, in this world. But uh, ideally, back back at it with with the fairs, you know. Um, um, you know, those are really up in the air. I know that the ones that I kind of had planned are looking into rescheduling, um, moving them forward. I've got several that I've rescheduled do the same weekend in September now. So it's kind of like this, I don't know what to do. Um, so really, I'm just kind of like, 
pretending that I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, there's a question on the screen right now, and I was about to answer that. Anyway, yes, I am planning to start on my next book. Uh, that's kind of pretty much my next plan. I've got some commissions that I'm working on or am about to start working on. So there's that. Um, but yeah, definitely like, you know, the time is ripe to to start really honing in on another book. And this time I want it to be, you know, I've, I've got my ABC book. Um, this one, I want it to be more narrative, more storyline, uh, more visual. So there's that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it. I'm just kind of taking it like day by day and seeing what happens. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's, you know, even though last year was so stressful, it's been nice to kind of sit back and you know, making this new work, it's like, okay, well, without all these things on my plate, because I tend to pile it up, um, it's been nice to be like, okay, I feel like I have more time to think about what I'm making and, you know, so we'll see. Yeah, that's one of the strange blessings out of this craziness is that space to think about those sorts of things. Um, yeah, as, as an artist or, you know, as a organization, you know, it's yeah. uh, it is that strange, um, you know, uh, unplanned opportunity to, right. to do those sorts of things. Looks like Laura Jost has a technical yeah. question. Yeah, do you use acrylic medium to glue paper down? Yes, I, uh, I use acrylic soft gel it's by Golden. I really, I like that a lot. It, it works great for gluing down. And then I also use it to coat my collages um yeah yeah and i use it in some of the pieces under glass as well you know if i'm gonna cut the background and you know some of those like the fox piece we looked at like with the tissue paper it's nice to to be able to like actually take the brush and glue over the tissue paper to give it a better texture um so yeah i use that acrylic soft gel and then i'll, I'll use like a pva or not a pva sorry a there's so many acronyms, UVLS or ultraviolet light protective, like polycrylic over the top of the acrylic gel. Yeah. Lots of acrylic. My hands always look like they're peeling for like a week after I finish work because it just has so much glue stuck and it's impossible to, maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't know. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, cool. Well, um, it's been great to, to see you and chat. Um, and I've not even seen you in this building yet since this has gone up. Um, but uh, just a reminder that uh, for those tuning in um, to come check it out in person. It's it's really great. And also go to Angie's website where she's, um, you know, has a lot more um, on, on that on that site. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll, I'll see you around sometime. Uh, Marlo has put together a little montage that we're going to close out, um, today's talk with. So thank you, Angie. And thanks to everybody who's tuned in wherever you are and stay safe. Thank you. And I just want to throw a little shout out to Denny and Keith Skillman and Amy Kunstel and her business pop who, um, have work in their collection that, they have, you know, graciously allowed us to hang in this yeah. as well. So, yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you all. And thank you all for watching and supporting. And yeah, I appreciate it. All right. See you later.